Welcome to the ESE TV. My name is Per Anton Sirnes and I am sitting here to, with Professor Robert Fagard from Leuven in Belgium. He is one of the long-standing leaders on the European scene regarding hypertension and cardiovascular prevention and he was the chair of the task force that produced the new 2013 hypertension guidelines. They were produced by the ESC and the European Society of Hypertension. And Professor Fagar, what are the main new changes in these guidelines compared to previous editions? First of all, with regard to blood pressure measurement, we have updated the role of home blood pressure monitoring and also the importance of white coat hypertension and masked hypertension. Then with regard to total cardiovascular risk stratification, we have kind of fine-tuned the risk stratification and we have integrated the vision of the European Society of Hypertension and the vision of the European Society of Cardiology, in fact, the SCORE model. With regard to initiation of antihypertensive treatment, we now know that we also have to treat octogenarians, so people older than 80 years. Importance was, of importance was also the target blood pressure nowadays, almost with few exceptions, a unified target of 140 over 90 millimeters of mercury. With regard to choice of antihypertensive treatment and monotherapy versus combination therapy, now this is individualized, this is targeted to the patient. And finally, in the resistant hypertension, there are some notes on device therapy. Well, that was really a review of, of nearly all aspects, but a very popular theme today is resistant hypertension. What does the guideline say about that? Well, with regard to resistant hypertension, it says that uh, you first have to try all medical possible therapies to control the patient. If that is not possible and if we are sure that it is true resistant hypertension, it means confirmed by ambulatory blood pressure monitoring, that then we can apply, we can consider device therapy in the first place, uh, renal denervation. And it only is reserved for patients with very high blood pressure, very high remaining blood pressure, unless treatment, and that is 160 over 110 millimeters of mercury. And finally, it should be reserved for specialized centers that are used to do the procedure. Yes, uh, the, the borders for targets for blood pressure in diabetics was previously a little lower than other, but now it's changed. Well, I think that uh, there was a time that uh, the lower the better. The lower the better was in fact in vogue. And in that time, uh, one had advocated to treat blood pressure down to 130 over 80 millimeter of mercury in high risk patients, including uh, diabetics. But Again, it proves that epidemiology and, and intervention is not the same. And if you look at intervention trials, then at least for diabetes, it is better to set the target blood pressure, the systolic blood pressure target blood pressure at 140 millimeters of mercury and the diastolic one at 85 millimeters of mercury. Well, thank you very much for these comments about these great new guidelines. I thank all listeners and viewers uh, for this session and hope that you will download or the guidelines or get the pocket guidelines uh, from the EC stand. ESC Congress 365 is your free access to EC Congress content all year long.